<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunklahoma City. Yes? It's homework time once again on the Pope on Film podcast. Yay! Yay! <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Please put down your fidget spinners and your cat videos and kindly pay attention. Yes. Each week, the Pope on Film podcasts assigns homework in the hopes of bettering its listeners, nay, all air breathers. Yes. So, just to be clear... This shit isn't for you, fish. That's right. Fuck you, fish. Not allowed to listen to the podcast. Fish. Goddamn fish. And this week for homework, I am leaving. I am leaving the premises. I am cutting out. Okay. Because there's because there's creepy creatures going on. Yes. There's monsters around. There's a monster in the podcast, Bella. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You've got a monster in the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got a monster in the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's listening. Monster comes a creeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best part of the movie. Absolute best part of the movie. This week's homework is the 1965 Beach Monster musical, The Beach Girls and the Monster. Now, ow, that was, you got my eye, Emerald. Damn. Now, here's what I absolutely love about this film, okay? Like, I, I, I was really trying to think outside the box when it comes to this film and they came up with something and and it like a light bulb went up went went off over my head um there is no doubt in my mind that this film was meant to be fucking disposable yes <laughs> movies like like this one movies like the Creeping Terror, Monster a Go Go, Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn Gorilla, and yeah. let's not forget, let's not forget its follow up, Boris Karloff meets a Tucson Illegal. Yes, that's the that's the follow up that not too many people have seen. But these films weren't meant to last the test of time, you know. My Yes, no, not at all. Yeah, they were meant to just cash in on a current trend quickly and cheaply cheaply to make a profit, you know, and not to weather the test of time. It's not like the director of The Beach Girls and the Monster was directing this film and going, this amazing film will no doubt be forever enjoyed by generation (laughs) upon generation of people. In fact, exactly 52 years from now, this incredible film will still be watched and discussed by the nation's leading Colorado potheads and manic Oklahoman Mexicans. Mm -hmm. Yes, half a decade from now, my film will be so easily available that Future men will be able to watch it in their flying cars with their robot dogs and their electronic cigarettes. Yes. It will be played every national holiday. We're not sure which one. Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas, you know. But in an event movie, gather your whole family around, drink some nog, and and, and enjoy this fine film. I meant to say half a century and not half a decade, and I realized I made this mistake by uh, uh, in stereo. So I had two women in my family say it. She just dropped all of her food. Just FYI. Oh, that's nice. Um, I, like, she didn't have a person next to her or anything. She, she's... Well, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make sure everybody has their food. Okay, okay. You're sitting right there. 
It's just I I've had I have such a hard time with her because it's like it, I'm hungry. I want to eat food. I'm gonna push all of this on the floor. And she does this all the time with me constantly, and it just sucks because she wants to eat food. She just also wants to throw all of it on the floor and not eat food. Are we talking about McDonald's again? Yes. Yes. Well, that that kind of sums up my feelings about McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. I just kind of want to throw it on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. You and Eleanor are in the same boat. The only thing I will do for McDonald's is... um, Just those double cheeseburgers. You yeah. drive, you drive through the, you drive through the window. It's two bucks, and you can eat them in the car. I feel the same way in the mornings with um, sausage McMuffins. Yeah, because just a sausage McMuffin is a dollar. Yeah, it's just a freaking dollar, and so I'll get like two or three of them, and it's just I oh, love those. I- I, I eat those like a motherfucker. <laughs> but disposable. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like these films are kind of not supposed to still exist. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or at least no one who helped create the film ever intended it to survive so long. Yeah. Yeah. And so it thank feels God weird. for us that it has. Yeah. It just feels really weird to still be. It feels odd to be watching this film fifty-two years later. There is There's... no real heart or soul or anything like that in this movie. It's it's goofy. Yeah, yeah. But there's no way that the people who made this thought, okay, the, yeah, no, this is going to be a wonderful film that everyone's going to love for years and years and years for, for decades. Mm-hmm. People are going to be loving this film. It's like, no, we're going to make this film quickly. We're going we're gonna to cash in, and then the film will be forgotten. But, like, you know, 52 years later, anyone in the world could pop up this video in seconds on their phone and watch it. Yes blows my mind Mm -hmm. absolutely blows my mind the internet is very cool yeah it's one of the best things that we've done i'd say yeah we're we're all of us using it for the wrong things yes yeah we are all using the internet wrong (laughs) so Here are some stats. I found some interesting stories about this film. It's a 1965 film directed by and starring Big John Hall as oceanographer scientist Dr. Otto Lindsay. Yes. This John Hall guy had a crazy ass life. His Wikipedia page is all over the freaking place. He was in the fifth Invisible Man movie when he was okay. a star for Universal. And besides right. that, besides that, he starred in hundreds of hard scrabble dramas that I've never heard of. As well as he was the title character in the TV show Ramar of the Jungle. Ramar of the Jungle. Okay. I have no idea what that is. And neither do I, but because of that. This dude has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Holy shit. One for movies and one for his TV show. I don't know if anybody else has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame because they didn't want to look it up, but God damn it, John Hall does. John Hall, one of the, the stars of of Beach Girl Monster? The, the Beach Girls and the Monster has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, Most of his films were between 1935 and 1959. So by the 60s, like Hollywood was just going, oh yeah, no, no, this guy's done. He's past his prime. Which may be why he directed slash starred in this film, because Lord knows nobody was giving him any parts at this point. You know? Uh, uh. So that that might be why this film existed, but so you think oh, you think this this film comes after his 
Sterling career. Yeah, yeah. Most of his films are, oh yeah, are like 1936, 1939, 1940s. You know what? That. One possibility that we're overlooking. Hmm. They had a street to fill up. That's a possibility. You know? That's, that's, it's kind of yeah. early on with the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's kind of new at that time. You yeah. know, you got three stars on it. This is not cool. See, so you, you chuck this guy too. Yeah. But, oh my God, this John Hall guy, he was also an inventor. Yeah. He has a number of patents on Optivision lenses that work underwater. He also has patents on specific types of hulls that are used by the Navy. Was he, also, he was he in an occult ritual with Aleister Crowley in a cave in Southern California trying to bring forth the Antichrist? That's a possibility. Okay. He also invented a special underwater camera, so he actually did all of the underwater cinematography for this film. And before I forget, Jeannie totally called the ending of this movie. Yeah. I did. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm happy that the ending is the ending because like the monster just looks shitty, you know? Cuz <laughs> cuz frankly, it was the, bad. Uh, fr- frankly, I was not expecting a surprise twist ending. I was yeah. I was expecting corner uh, cops corner the monster and shoot it to death. Yeah. That's what that's the ending I was expecting. Yeah. It, the ending did cross my mind, but I was just kind of like, yeah, movies like this just don't work like that though usually. So they yeah. got me. They got that's yeah. how they got me. Yeah. Um, yeah, John Hall also did the underwater cinematography for the film The Navy versus the Night Monster. Okay. So yeah, in the seventies he wasn't getting any like movie work. He was getting a few TV spots here and there, but mostly in the seventies he was busy running his own company that handled camera lenses. <laughs> nice, right? right? Also, this is a story that's only lightly touched upon in his Wikipedia page. It's only like two sentences. But apparently John Hall was in a legendary Hollywood fight that he got into that I'm not going to mention now because I want to eventually use it as another installment of Steve's historical approximations. But he got into a legendary Hollywood fight with a major musician and the story is crazy as shit. Oh, nice. It is insane. And yeah, like his Wikipedia stories. page his Wikipedia page is only like one sentence about it. So I looked it up and oh my god, the story is insane. The story is insane. <laughs> and of course, the thing that I love the most about this freaking movie, besides you know, some some uh decent cleavage, is the yeah. adorably stupid, bizarre, non sequitur scene on the beach where a nightmare inducing lion puppet appears and sings a campfire song with our young teens out of nowhere? Yes. Out of nowhere in this teen beach horror movie, a lion appears to sing a song. Now, that's not quite what I was expecting, but I was totally happy with it. Yes, there is definitely a lion there singing a song. Yeah, but I was kind of picturing more like Drooper from the Banana Splits. Yeah, just yeah. slides out on the beach, just him, spotlight, and he does this song. Yeah, if I remake the movie, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So, um, I love this so much, and the way it came out. The way the way that this came about is that you know the character of the sculptor in the movie? Yes. The one um, the one that that made me say he's crippled? I missed that. What was what, he crippled? Um interesting story. Apparently right before filming the movie, the actor Walter Edmiston got into a serious car accident. But oh. because this movie, because this movie is so cheap, the filmmaker said, "Okay, guess what? Uh, your character has a limp now. We're just gonna go with this." Okay. 
We're just going to go with this. Your character has a limp. It doesn't matter. It's the Beach Girls and the Monster. Let's go, people. <laughs> I, I love I, it. I, I, I so could much. bet that happened. I, I would yeah. like lay yeah. money on it and get in the time machine. No, that is literally what happened. Yeah. Yeah. You got into a car accident and they said, let's go with it. Okay, your character's crippled now. We're just going to do this. <laughs> the guy who played him, his name was Wal- Walker. Walker. I Walker. keep wanting to say Walter, but it's Walker. Walker Edmiston. And throughout the 1950s and 1960s, he had a big local kid show in L.A. in the mornings, and it was the Walker Edmiston, sh- Edmiston show. Where oh, that's created- not fair to do to kids. <laughs> yeah. Walker Edmiston. The Walker Edmiston show. He created a number of characters, and one of them was Kingsley the Lion. So having him appear on the show was big at the time, you know? Uh-huh. Like, ooh, we're going to get the TV character. We're going to get Walker Edmiston. So everyone in L.A. is going to love this movie. Everyone in L.A. is going to go crazy because we not only did we have Walker Edmiston, we're going to try and get Kingsley the Lion in this. So it would be like today's equivalent, more or less, of getting that teen mom chick. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, you know what it is. You know what I, I know exactly what this is. This is getting the Duck Dynasty guy for God's Not Dead. Maybe in a little bit. That's a good. That's a good analogy. That's yeah. a pretty good analogy. Yeah. But interestingly enough. Um, Walker Edmiston went on to become a massively popular voiceover actor. Uh huh. And uh, in addition to voiceover work in the movie Dick Tracy, Disney's Great Mouse Detective, the original Star Trek, Land of the Lost, etc., 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 various uh, movie parts. He yeah, he was kind of had a face. He was the dubbed voice of Slugworth in Willy Wonka. Yeah. Um, he had one major character that just brought him um, so much riches and fame that throughout the 70s and 80s and 90s, he was the voice of the freaking Keebler elf. <laughs> Throughout the 70s and 80s and 90s, all the way until his death in 2007. Yeah. He was the freaking Keebler elf. Nice. Nice. I I have a lot more respect for this movie now. Yeah. And the next time I watch it, you you bet I'm just going to be like, Keebler fucking elf. Yeah. (laughs) Freaking Keebler elf. Amazing. So anyway, um, it's a cute throwaway film. I love it. Yes. There's go-go dancers. So it's definitely one of those films. I, I most probably saw it. That's the kind of shit they run at, ran on TV all the time. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it, but why would I remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a throwaway. There's a pretty decent soundtrack. Um. Frank Sinatra Jr. before he it, it, the music is done by Frank Sinatra Jr. before he decided to ride on Frank Sinatra's coattails. Yes. Which he still does, you know, I'm so pretty sure. I think he's dead. I think. But definitely throughout the like 80s and 90s and zeros, he's like I'm Frank Sinatra Jr. I'm wearing this suit and I've got a cocktail in my hand and I'm singing swinging songs just like my dad. But it's obvious that when the Beach Girls and the Monster came along, he was like, screw you, dad. I'm making beach music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so this film is like him rebelling against his father. Yeah, but you but you know that he got all the parts just by someone. Hey, you. Put the kid in something. He's getting on my nerves. Oh, hell yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but I, I think your beach music thing, yes, that would be the tipping point in the relationship. Yeah. 
So, a decent soundtrack. The, apparently, the man who filmed all of the surfing scenes apparently went on to become one of the world's most famous surf filmmakers of all time. Really? Yeah. So when it nice. comes to like surf, when it comes to like a uh, surfers, this film is kind of legendary for that sort of thing. So it, what we have, what we have here is a collection of people that went on to do really good things. Just not in this. Just, just not in this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Music by a future Family Guy character, Frank Sinatra Jr. There's a stupid monster that's not even a real monster, but a dummy in a monster suit. I love this stupid movie. I, 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 I since, since you basically said the ending anyway, because uh, yeah. I don't think we, we need to keep this spoiler free. We never do. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I, I really appreciated the the flat out Scooby Doo ending to this fucking yeah. movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Jeannie exactly called it that way, and I was like, and, and I was like, yeah, no, they're gonna shoot it. That's as inventive as these things get. So like, good movie, two points for that. Yeah, yeah, and the whole time I'm just like, oh. Is this monster going to be scary? Because the monster looks really crappy. And then it's like, oh, wait, it's not really a monster. That's why it looks crappy. Yeah, and it explained why he he wasn't able to beat up a young snot teenager punk. Yeah. Oh, all right, then. You're a monster. You should be doing much better in this fight. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, that's it for Beach Girls and the Monster. Well, I that do is- want to point out. I do want to point out to millennials, fairly early in the movie, um, the the guy who turned out to be to be the monster, the the one yeah. who was like who was who was just ragging out teenagers. Yeah, you know, I've been meaning to clip that and and make mm. a little millennials post out of it. <laughs> Nice. You know, like, don't worry. It's always been like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bunny. Yeah. Uh, Maxwell is here, and he would like to say something to you. Uh, take it away, Maxwell. Hey, Maxwell, you know what? Maxwell, you know what? What? Pancakes with syrup are yummy. That was my line. <laughs> you took his line. He's so upset. He's shaking his fist at you. He's shaking his fist angrily. Oh my god! Oh, my god. I'm so sorry. I'm clairvoyant. Hold on. He still has something he wants to say. Yes, Collector card emoji movie. Oh, you got the collector movie? card emoji movie. Are you Yoda? Head me a box. Have emoji. You go on it. Emoji. Yeah, you got an emoji. That's awesome. Thank you, Maxwell. Collector card. Yeah, and collector card. That's, That's cool. Awesome. Monkey head. Monkey head. Monkey yeah, you head. got a monkey head emoji. Yeah. All right then. You can click them to your back. You take the collector cards out, and you can use them as a stuffed animal. What do I do? What? And when you turn, when when you have it facing this way, there's not anything in the eyes. When you turn it this way, there is. Gotcha. What do yeah. I do if I don't have a backpack? Can I uh, can I uh, use it as a piercing? In my septum, can I put it on my on my you know pierce my nipples with it? Like, what do I do with this? I don't have a backpack. What, what do I do if I want to mount it on my wall? Uh, yeah, you might need a staple gun. Do you have a staple gun, Maxwell? No. Uh, oh. Uh, that's disappointing, Maxwell. <laughs> you know what? That's really disappointing. You can put one on 
does, does he have any souls of those who've done him wrong? Um, I'll ask him later. If I continue asking him this, he might take over the podcast again. Yeah. Because souls are really and, sticky. A lot of people don't know yeah. that. Yeah. And that is it for homework this week. And we sincerely hope that your eyes, minds, and major arteries have all been suitably opened. Yes. Ah! But don't think you're going to get away that easily. Don't forget next week's homework. And for next week's homework, we are once again diving into the well of old school educational videos with a pair of 1961 public service videos from the Inglewood Police Department okay. warning children warning children about the dangers of gay people. Oh, really? Now, from the Inglewood Police Department. Is that the there actual are, title? No, 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 no. The, there are two videos, see? Oh. One for boys and one for girls. Okay. And they were made by the same people at the same time. So we're going to be watching the both of them. Uh, boys Beware and Girls Beware. Oh, okay, I've seen Boys Beware. So, Yes, but a lot of people have seen Boys Beware, but people don't realize that, okay, we're going to be splitting up into two different groups. Now, the, the girls go into the auditorium. The boys, you'll be staying here. And that there were two different videos. One of them on the, on the Bob disc is uh, Boys Beware. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Boys Beware and Girls Beware, because I think it's important that, you know, we we watch both of them. Yes. And kind of compare and contrast, you know? Yes. Because there are going to be different dangers. Yes, exactly. D different dangers for both boys and girls. Yes. So, so that Sally will will learn how to put on makeup. You know, that's a danger. And yeah. and little Bobby will learn how to dress like a fucking human. Yeah. Okay. So there are different dangers. Yeah. So join us next week for more edutainmentalizing. Yes. For more edutainmentalizing homework with the Poop on Film Podcast. And cut. <laughs>